And a big win for Republicans last night in Virginia. Glenn Youngkin projected to be the Commonwealth's next governor, getting more than 50 percent of the vote, while 48.6 percent went for former Democrat Governor Terry McAuliffe. We've got all angles covered this morning. Let's get to Fox Business chief national correspondent Colin McShane. He is live this morning on the ground in Richmond, Virginia. Colin, good morning to you. Good morning, Maria. We had a voter in the suburbs of Richmond tell us yesterday that she really liked the way Glenn Youngkin ran his campaign, that he didn't bring in a lot of outside voices, that he spoke for himself. And I'll tell you, as we see the results this morning, we know that the message he delivered really resonated here. There was a big party in the early morning hours at the Youngkin campaign headquarters, the former businessman talking about lower taxes, talking a lot about giving parents more say in how their children are educated. Pretty soon he'll be doing a lot of his talking here in Richmond as the state's next governor. There is no time to waste. Our kids can't wait. We work in real people time, not government time. And so on day one, we're going to work. Now, the economy and education were the big issues of this campaign. Take a look at voters who identified taxes as issue number one for them. 62%. Youngkin. Education, that's traditionally a strong issue for Democrats. Not this time. 71 percent Youngkin. Now, Terry McAuliffe, who appeared thanking supporters before the race was called last night, he was strong on the coronavirus. But in the end, it just wasn't enough to get his old job back. Youngkin, the former co-CEO, the Carlisle Group, he won it with an economic message, but also with this education message really resonating with parents, especially in places like the Richmond suburbs where we were yesterday. I'll tell you, this is a big turnaround in the state of Virginia. First Republican to win statewide in 12 years. President Biden won here by 10 points last year. The outgoing Governor Ralph Northam, a Democrat, won by nine points four years ago. This morning, though, Maria, it's a Republican in Glenn Youngkin, set to be the next governor. Back to you. Yeah, and, and this was all that the Democrats were focused on this weekend, Connell, because they are worried this is going to portend for news in 2022 and potentially 2024. Connell, we'll get back to you as more news develops. Thank you so much on the ground in Virginia this morning. Uh, I am here this morning with Dagan McDowell and Tammy Bruce. And Dagan, it wasn't just schools, although that was the probably most important uh, issue that 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 leaned for Glenn Youngkin, but it was also, as you mentioned, the grocery tax. It was inflation. It was national security issues. And I wonder how much all of these failed policies out of the Biden administration also played in here. Well, Joe Biden on the ground in Virginia, he managed to, you know, cross the Potomac for a brief moment. He mentioned Trump's name, what, two dozen times. That's all he had. And essentially called Glenn Youngkin a white supremacist. And so there was this and even from Kamala Harris, everybody who seemed to come to Virginia to campaign for Terry McAuliffe, there was this sense of desperation. And I've said this before, but desperation is the world's worst cologne. The people in Omaha, Nebraska, as in Nevada, could smell it uh, coming off the McAuliffe campaign. Uh, uh, just a few things to note. Virginia in the last eight to ten years has wildly underperformed in terms of job creation when compared to North Carolina. And that was part of the message from Glenn Youngkin. I think North Carolina has created like ten times the number of jobs that Virginia has. And this is a message that Glenn Youngkin was bringing to all Virginians from the rural south side rural southwestern Virginia in even into the heavily populated uh, northern part of the state. Glenn Youngkin outperformed, according to 538, outperformed the um, 2020 benchmarks in most of Virginia's largest cities and counties. And one thing working in Youngkin's favor, it was also Winsome Sears, who won lieutenant governor, first woman, first uh, person of color to win that office in the state, former Marine. Uh, she's a works in prison ministry and ran a homeless shelter for women. The woman, there is nothing she can't do. And she won the lieutenant governor's race. And then also Jason Miyares, who won the for attorney general. He is a of <clears throat> Cuban American descent, but also in the background of all of this was Doug Wilder. He is the first black governor of any state in this country, a beloved figure in Virginia, a real Virginia gentleman. And he had been uh, talking a lot about this race, and he didn't come out against McAuliffe, and Doug Wilder's a Democrat, 
but he might as well have. He, Wilder told this radio talk show host in July, uh, McAuliffe called on Ralph Northam to resign. He didn't resign. And why do you now seek his support and sought his support for your candidacy? Over and over again, Doug Wilder kind of behind the scenes really did. He said that Glenn Youngkin called him on the phone to talk about funding the historic black colleges and universities. And McAuliffe basically yeah. had nothing to say to him. So that's who Terry McAuliffe is. Yeah. He's a shapeshifter, well, a smarmy shapeshifter. Well, he, yeah, and, and when I look at Terry McAuliffe, all I can think of is the Clintons. I don't know about you, but I, he's been so tied to the Clintons. And, you know, voters got fatigue, perhaps. And, and Tammy, then there's this. Here's Vice President Kamala Harris uh, campaigning for Terry McAuliffe a week ago. Watch. It is a bellwether for what happens in the rest of the country. You see, what happens in Virginia? will in large part determine what happens in 2022, 2024, and on. Tammy, that is exactly the sentiment that was driving Nancy Pelosi to do that whole dog and pony show last week while bringing uh, Joe Biden to the Capitol to come up with this smoke and mirrors that they had some kind of a framework agreement to try to get a deal pushed through before we saw the result in Virginia. It didn't happen for her. Yeah, it didn't. And I think what their worry was, and it's, it's happened, is that any other weaker Democrats are going to now peel off because they see this statement. It is an undeniable statement. What happened around the country, wherever Americans could say enough already, they said so. So she's lost that power. Even AOC had campaigned for a man, for a woman who was uh, challenging the incumbent mayor of Buffalo. And she went out there, and this was going to be a big progressive win, uh, at, that her candidate won the primary. But he ran as a write-in. And, and he's he's winning by over double digits. So this is this is what we've got with Obama and Kamala Harris. I believe damaged McAuliffe, damaged what the Democrats are doing, and they continue to do so. Yeah, and you make a great point because there are a whole host of moderates there in Virginia and surrounding areas. You have to want in Congress. You have to wonder if they're looking at these results and saying, "Let me rethink this. Take exactly. the page out of Joe Manchin's book exactly. and, and and rethink whether or not I'm going to go forward on all of this spending." The people have spoken.